Okay, so I want to start by asking you guys a question. How many of you have had to fill out some sort of web form where you've been asked to read a distorted sequence of characters or distorted words such as this one? Outstanding. Okay, how many of you found it really, really annoying? Outstanding. Okay, I invented that. <laughs> So that, that thing is called a CAPTCHA. And the reason is there is to make sure that you, the entity filling out the form, are actually a human and not some sort of computer program that was written to submit the form millions and millions of times. And the reason it works is because humans, at least non-visually impaired humans, have no trouble reading these distorted squiggly characters, whereas computer programs simply can't do it as well yet. So for example, in the case of Ticketmaster, whenever you're buying tickets on Ticketmaster, you have to fill out these squiggly characters. And the reason for that is to make sure that scalpers cannot write a program to buy millions of tickets two at a time. Okay, so that's what this does. Uh, so now, CAPTCHAs are used all over the internet, and since they're used so often, a lot of times the precise sequence of random characters that are shown to the user, so these are supposed to be random characters shown to the user, the precise sequence of random characters sometimes is not so fortunate. So for example, this is a screenshot from the Yahoo registration form. The random characters <laughs> happen to be W-A-I-T, which of course spell a word, but the best is the Yahoo, the help message that the Yahoo help desk got about 20 minutes after this was presented. <laughs> okay, so. So the guy thought he had to wait. Uh, this is, of course, not as bad as this poor person who restarted their computer. <laughs> OK, so captures are useful on the internet, and they have all kinds of applications. And I could spend the next hour talking about all the different applications. But since I don't want to do that, let me illustrate one of the applications through a little story. And it's uh, this one. A few years ago, Slashdot, which is a very popular website for nerds, uh, put up this poll in their site asking, which is the best computer science graduate school in the United States? Now, if you think about it for a second, this is a really dangerous question to ask over the internet. Uh, because as soon as the poll went up, students at Carnegie Mellon wrote a program that voted for Carnegie Mellon millions and millions of times. Okay. The next day, students at MIT wrote their own program. And a few days later, the poll had to be taken down because both CMU and MIT had more than 6 billion votes. <laughs> and every other school had less than 1,000. So I guess if you think about it, the poll did exactly what it was supposed to do. But, but in general, we simply cannot trust the results of an online poll because anybody could just write a program to vote for their favorite option. Now, one possible solution to that is to use a CAPTCHA to make sure that only humans can vote. Okay, so CAPTCHAs can, can be used to improve web polls. Another application of CAPTCHAs is in free email services. You probably, this is probably where most of you have seen CAPTCHAs. So there's a lot of companies that offer free email, uh, Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, et cetera. And up until a few years ago, they were all suffering from a very specific type of attack and it was people who wrote programs to obtain millions of email accounts every day. And the people who wrote these programs were spammers. So here's the thing. If you're a spammer and you want to send spam from, say, Yahoo accounts, you want your spam to come from some account at yahoo.com, you run into the problem that each Yahoo email account only allows you to send like 100 messages a day. So if you're a spammer and you want to send 100 million messages per day to the whole world, you have to obtain millions of, of email accounts from which you can send the spam. Okay, so this is why spammers wrote programs to obtain millions of accounts. Um, so in, and, and the solution, this is what we originally told Yahoo, was to use a CAPTCHA to make sure that only humans can obtain free email accounts. Okay, so that's what the CAPTCHAs are there for. So in general, CAPTCHAs are used to stop spammers from doing bad things on the internet. Now, of course, spammers on their side have started coming up with all kinds of dirty hacks to get around the CAPTCHAs that are being used in practice. Let me show you uh, one of them. Uh, this is, we call them CAPTCHA sweatshops. So spam companies have actually started hiring humans whose sole job is to type CAPTCHAs all day long. Okay, these are just people who sit there typing CAPTCHAs all day long. Uh, for spam companies, uh, this, and this is happening. This is usually happening in other countries where the minimum wage is a lot lower, okay, but, but it's happening. Um, but there's at least two consolations. So first, it's at least costing them some. So whereas before, uh, spammers could get millions and millions of email accounts for free, now they have to pay a fraction of a cent per account so they can't get that many. Second, if you think about it, CAPTCHAs are actually generating jobs in underdeveloped countries. <laughs> okay, I am, I'm here. Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is what some uh, 
spam companies have started doing. Let me tell you an even dirtier hack, and this is what some pornography companies have started doing. Uh, so in case you didn't know, there, there's pornography on the web. Uh, and pornography companies would also like to send spam. So let me show you one trick that they're doing, okay? So um, imagine there's a pornography company that would like to send spam from Yahoo accounts. Okay, so they, they need to obtain millions of Yahoo accounts from which they can send spam. So what they do is they write a program that fills out the entire registration form at Yahoo. Now, whenever this program gets to the CAPTCHA, the program can't read it. So what it does is it copies the CAPTCHA to the porn page. Now, back at the porn page, there's a lot of people looking at pornography. And suddenly, one of them gets this screen saying, hey, if you want to see the next pornographic image or pornographic video, you got to type the word that's in the box below. And you know what people do? They type the word as fast as possible. <laughs> and by typing it, they are effectively solving the CAPTCHA for the porn company. That is, they are effectively getting an email account that the porn company can later use to spam you. Okay, so I, I keep on telling people, pornographers, they're very smart people. Uh, okay, so now let me, let me show you one more thing about CAPTCHA. So the idea of a CAPTCHA is much more general. Most of you have seen uh, the same type of CAPTCHA, the squiggly characters, but the idea is a lot more general. The idea is just, it's just a test that we're trying to test whether the user is actually a human and not some sort of computer program. Okay, so uh, let me show you some different examples of CAPTCHAs that people have started coming up with, uh, and I'm just going to show them to you just because I, I find them uh, pretty funny. So these are, these, are also gonna, these are all supposed to be tests that humans can easily do, but that computers cannot yet do. Okay, so let me show you um, one of them that starts, so let me show you one, one of them that started coming up in all kinds of Russian sites. This we're gonna call the Russian CAPTCHA. This is what you have to do. <laughs> it's, it's funny to think that in Russia they think that anybody could just solve a limit. <laughs> uh, this actually happens to be a pretty bad CAPTCHA. This is not a very good CAPTCHA because computers can actually do this, you know, solve a limit, but, but it's funny to think that to see that they think that anybody could just solve a limit. Okay, so this is the Russian capture, you have to solve a limit. Let me show you one that started coming up in all kinds of Indian sites. We're gonna call this the Indian capture. You have to analyze the circuit. And this is, I'm not even, I'm not even making this up, right? This is, this is starting, um, again, it's interesting to see that in India they think anybody could just analyze the circuit, uh, but of course, again, this is a pretty crappy capture. Computers can actually do this. So, but now, let me put this in contrast. So, in Russia, the capture, you have to solve a limit. In India, the capture, you have to analyze a circuit. Let me show you the capture that started coming up in all kinds of US-based blogs. We're gonna call this the American capture. <laughs> I, I wish I was making this up. <laughs> uh, again, this is a pretty crappy capture because computers can actually add. Okay, so let me tell you what I actually want to tell you about in this talk, okay? So the, the first little part, I just needed to introduce you to the concept of a CAPTCHA. Now I'm gonna tell you what I really want to talk about, which is this newer project, it's called reCAPTCHA. We started working on this about two years ago. Um, and this is sort of the future of CAPTCHA. So let me tell you, and, and this came from, uh, so this new project came from one number. It turns out that approximately 200 million CAPTCHAs are typed every day by people around the world. The squiggly characters, about 200 million words are typed every day by people around the world. Now, when I first heard this number, I was quite proud of myself. I thought, look at the impact that my research has had. Uh, but then I started feeling bad. So here's the thing. Each time you type one of these annoying CAPTCHAs, essentially, you're wasting 10 seconds of your time. And if you multiply that by 200 million, you get that humanity as a whole is wasting 500,000 hours every day typing these annoying CAPTCHAs. Uh, yeah, so, so, I, so I started feeling bad, uh, and then I started thinking, well, of course, we can't just get rid of CAPTCHAs because the security of the web sort of depends on them. But then I started thinking, is there any way in which we can use this effort for something that's good for humanity? So here's the thing. During those 10 seconds, while you're typing a CAPTCHA, your brain is doing something amazing. Your brain is doing something that computers cannot yet do. So is there a way in which we can use those 10 seconds for something that's good for humanity? Another way of putting it is, is there some humongous problem that we cannot yet get computers to solve, but that somehow we can split into tiny 10 second chunks, such that each time somebody types a CAPTCHA, they're actually solving a little bit of this problem. 
And the answer to that is yes, and this is what we're doing now. So what you may not know is that nowadays when you type a captcha, not only are you authenticating yourself as a human, but in addition, you're helping us digitize books. Okay, so the idea is the following. There's a lot of projects out there trying to digitize books. Um, the Internet Archive has one, Google has one, now Amazon with a Kindle has one. They're, they're trying to digitize books. And basically what they're doing is they're taking old books, books that were written before the computer age, and scanning them so that they can be in electronic format. Okay? So, and the way the book digitization works is as follows. So you start with an old book, okay? a physical book, and then you scan it. Now scanning a book is like taking a digital photograph of every page of the book. Okay? This is literally what scanning a book means. It's, the way they do it is they take a digital photograph of every page of the book. Okay? The next step in the process is that the computer needs to be able to decipher, once you've, you've taken all these photographs of every page of the book, the computer needs to be able to decipher all of the words in the photograph. That's so that you can search through the, the text of the book. Okay, so the computer program needs to look at these photographs with text in them, and it needs to be able to decipher them. That's done using a technology called OCR for optical character recognition. Okay, that's the program that does that. Now the problem with OCR is that it doesn't always work very well, especially for older books where the ink has faded. The computer cannot recognize a lot of the characters. So for example, in the H in the over there, you see that the, it has lost its bridge just because it's degraded, the ink has degraded, so the computer cannot recognize many of the characters. So for example, in this particular scan, which is actually a pretty high quality scan for something this age, if you try to get the computer to recognize the characters, if you run OCR on this, this is what you get. So in yellow are all the mistakes. For things that were written before 1900, before the year 1900, the computer cannot recognize approximately 30% of all the words. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're taking all the words that the computer cannot recognize and we're getting people to read them for us while they're typing captures on the internet. Okay, so the idea is the following. Okay, so let me explain how it works. So we start with a scan book, okay? Then we take all the words that OCR, that the computer cannot recognize. Uh, now, how do you know when, a, when the computer cannot recognize a word? It turns out that the computer actually tells you that. It gives you a confidence for every word, so we know whether it can rec whether it recognized correctly or not. Okay, so we're gonna take all the words that the computer cannot recognize, and we're gonna use these as the basis for a captcha. Okay, notice these are perfect for a captcha because these are by definition words the computer could not recognize. Okay, so we're gonna take this word, <laughs> we're gonna distort it even more to make sure that the computer cannot recognize it, and then we're gonna present it as a captcha. To somebody who's trying to buy tickets on Ticketmaster, we're gonna give them this word. Now, you might be wondering, how can we use this as a captcha if the system doesn't know the answer for it? Okay, we're gonna, the system's gonna give this word to somebody who's trying to buy tickets on Ticketmaster. It should be the case that if they type the word between, the system lets them in. But if they don't type the word between, the system shouldn't let them in because after all, the captures a security mechanism. Now the question is, how can it do that when this is a word that it just took out of a book and it didn't know the answer for it? Right? For, for the system, this is just an image with some word in it, it doesn't know what it is. The solution to this problem is what we do, whenever we present a word for which the system doesn't know the answer, we actually give it along with another word, one for which the system does know the answer. Okay, so we're gonna give people two words. We're gonna say, um, one of them, the system already knows the answer. For one of them, it doesn't know the answer. We're not gonna tell the user which one's which, of course. And we're gonna say, please type both. And if you type the correct word for the one for which the system already knew the answer, then the system assumes you're human. And it also gets some confidence that you type the other word correctly. And if you repeat this process to like 10 different people, and they all agree that the new word is the word between, then with overwhelmingly high probability, that word is actually the word between. So this is what one, basically the idea of digitizing one word. Okay, so this is roughly how this works. Uh, so what we did is, about a couple of years ago, we um, released this web service, it's called reCAPTCHA, where the idea is if you're a website, like Facebook, for example, where you need captures to protect yourself against spam, uh, you, then you can come talk to us and we'll give you the captures for free. And the only caveat is that we get to see what your users are typing so that we get to digitize words. Uh, so ever since we released this web, web service, a lot of companies, a lot of websites have started switching from the old captcha where people wasted the time to the new captcha where people are helping to digitize books. So for example, Facebook has switched, so every time you get a Facebook account, you help to digitize a book. Uh, Ticketmaster, so every time you buy tickets, you help digitize a book. Um, Craigslist, Twitter, and about 120,000 other sites have all switched. Uh, so the number of, and in fact, the number of sites that are using the new 
reCAPTCHA is so large that the number of words that we're digitizing per day is extremely large. So this is a graph, this is actually old. We're now digitizing about 45 million words per day by just having people type captures on the internet. Okay, this is the equivalent of about four million books a year, uh, just one word at a time. Um, okay, so that's that. Okay, now, of course, since we present so many uh, words, you know, millions per day, and now we're presenting randomly chosen pairs of English words right next to each other, funny things can happen again. Um, <laughs> let me show you a couple of, the, a couple of them. So, Here's one, um, we presented this word, just the word Christians, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you present it along with another randomly chosen word, uh, bad things could happen. So we presented this, which is, okay, so that's somewhat bad, but it's even worse because the particular website where we presented this actually happened to be called the Embassy of the Kingdom of God. <laughs> Oops. Uh, here, here's another bad one. Uh, JohnEdwards.com. Uh, so we insult people every every day. You know, and, um, okay. So some 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 questions you may have. So some of you may are probably thinking this. I'm sure. Uh, wait a second. You started saying that humanity as a whole is wasting 500,000 hours every day typing these annoying captures, and your solution is to double that amount of time <laughs> by giving people two words instead of one? You might be thinking that, and that's a good thought to have, but actually, you're wrong. Uh, here's the thing. It turns out that typing two randomly chosen English words takes equally as long as typing six to eight random characters. Okay, so oh, previous CAPTCHAs use six to eight random characters. Now we use two randomly chosen English words. It turns out that English words have patterns in them that we're accustomed to. And so we can type them equally as fast. So the amount of time hasn't actually increased. Um, now the question that you may have is where exactly are the words coming from? So the words are actually coming from two places. The first is um, the New York Times archive. So the New York Times has this huge archive of all editions of the New York Times that were written between 1851 and 1980. So it's about 130 years of archive. We've been doing them. And we're going to be doing with this entire archive in a little less than 12 months. Um, so that's the New York Times. And then the other place is uh, the books. And uh, as of very recently, Google actually acquired reCAPTCHA. So now it's the Google Books project where we're doing this. And um, that is all I have to say. <laughs>